Hi, Mike with you. The last part of the Russian MRE PRI menu one is liver pate. <laughs> I've been avoiding this. I hate liver. You know, it's funny. I like liver worse in the store, but I was in a, I don't know what, I think it was a Mr. Bagel or something. They said, oh, you want, they put liver worse on your bagel. And I said, sure, I'll try that. Well, it wasn't anything like what was in, in the, you know, supermarket with much liver, more liver. You can see it looks like it. it smells like it. It's very kind of uh, creamy. It's not uh, hard. Actually, this tastes just like liverwurst. Now, normally, well, every spoon, I use the crackers up. This could be put on crackers. It's not too bad at all. Oh. Uh, and it's the same menu. I wish they'd given me a different one, but that's fine. So I've got this for when I really want to use it or need it. But, uh... I found the meals in this to be very satisfying. In other words, you usually got a tin, uh, oh, what do I want to say? Five by four about, of, uh, we got, uh, something with buckwheat. We got a ham, kind of a compressed ham thing. That was really good. And, uh, I forget what the other item was. That's funny. I've been trying them over the course of a week. But they were very good, and they were very filling. In other words, after you ate them, you felt satisfied. So you're, you're basically breaking over, uh, oh, breaking over two tins. You know, there was one this size, and uh, one of them had jelly, and one of them had zucchini caviar, they call it, which is kind of funny because nothing but caviar at all, but the idea was caviar is expensive and rare. Well, you would do this with zucchinis instead and spread that on crackers or whatever you're going to do. Uh, and uh, so you got, you had that kind of, that spread or jelly, you had the crackers, and then you had the main meal, which main part, entree, I guess you would call it, 250 grams of something. And uh, it was good. Now, <laughs> What do I want to say negative about this? Well, okay, this is 24 hours. If, if a soldier was going to be out for two days, this is a lot of weight to carry. Uh, I think it's like four pounds. So you would have eight more pounds on your back. And, you know, part of me says that, you know, American soldiers sometimes will open their MREs throw things out even, and just carry the main parts they want to. But you have a problem with that, with this, because uh, the tins uh, can get dented or broken. So I would think that if you took this out of the box and stuck it in your backpack, you would run a really good chance of uh, breaking those containers somehow. And then, you know, I guess if you, you know, you break them the day you're going to eat them, it's no problem, but... Uh, <coughs> I don't know, it doesn't just sound like something that would be very good because even, let's say, a jelly broke open, it could get around in your other stuff. You'd have to have, maybe you'd take this, you know, take the things out of the cardboard box that this is in and then put them back in the bag. Now, this is a strong bag. I did find, they mentioned about carrying water, and you really could with this. It's, it doesn't have a <coughs> pull-apart seam, re really, but I cut along here. So you can still use, you know, you can still carry the bag. You could put water in it. Now, speaking of that, I guess the two things I didn't like about this is I didn't like the stove. The stove was just a little piece of a, you know, metal that you bent around. And it was just kind of flimsy. And uh, the thing I was cooking fell off of it. And, you know, there's some of me, I have a bad back, so I'm not you know, scooch down or kneeling on the ground, like maybe a soldier would be. 
And uh, I did think too afterwards, normally the, the uh, pointed ends are up on it. I think I would turn the stove over and try it so those, those little uh, sharp ends could dig into the dirt a little. But, you know, I could have used a couple rocks too. I could have got three or four rocks and, uh, you know, lit the tablet and then uh, put that on the three rocks, as you saw in my other videos. Uh, using a isobutane store, stove, it was very easy to burn the contents. Normally, really, what you would have to do is to take the contents out, put them in your mess kit, and, and stir it a while if you're using that that type of heat because it's just it's just really hot. And you're really you're really just warming these. You know, they don't really need to be cooked. I don't believe. So, but then. <laughs> We got to talk about the water purification. Okay, this come came with three one-liter purification tablets, and they were chlorine-based. I'll put the little blurb about it below here. But the problem is, okay, that that's a really good water purification pill, except for the fact that it doesn't work with cryptosporidium forms, cysts. Now, what is that like? It's kind of like an egg with a microorganism in it, but the egg is a really hard, the shell is really hard. So if you just put chlorine in there, it doesn't hurt it at all. So it just continues, and you know, once you ingest it, it's going to break open, and then you're going to have this cryptosporidium, which uh, is not nice. And evidently, you know, I've been doing some research, and there's no definite way to get rid of it once you have it. You know, they have certain drugs. But you can imagine if you were, let's just make up this situation where you're, you're in a, a team of 12 people, right? And you go to this one area and uh, you need to get some water there. You get the water, but because of what's going on, you can't, you know, boil it. You can't set it up and boil it. So you put these tablets in it, you know, you get a one liter canteen, it goes in. And their contact time is an hour instead of a half an hour. So anyway, you say they did that, they go out on their mission, they're drinking this water. Uh, it could be possible that they all get sick at the same time. And I'll tell you that isn't something you want to have happen when you're, you're, you have a military mission to do. I remember listening to uh, Michael Hawk talk about, you know, he was in the special service and did all these kind of covert operations and everything. And he said one time they were out and they all caught something and it just took them all out. It just stopped the mission. <laughs> because there's so much, so much you can do when you're puking or have diarrhea or, you know, these sorts of things. So then the question becomes, <laughs> you have the, this possibility of cryptosporidium. So where could you find that? Well, the more I read, the more, like in the U.S., they say any surface waters you should assume has cryptosporidium. So that means that most of these tablets that people buy aren't going to work with that. They're chlorine based. Now, there is one chlorine based pill that will work, and that's uh, chlorine dioxide. Okay? The, uh, let me think how to express this. This extra amount of oxygen is in a state where it really wants to be disassociated and attached to something else. Well, when that happens, it attaches to something like a microorganism or the cyst from the cryptosporidium. And of course, that changed the character of it. You could imagine if you had egg, an egg that's hard, and you could put something on it that made it soft, the egg would just kind of, you know, under its own weight and would break open. And that's kind of what happens with the chlorine dioxide. Now, unfortunately, chlorine dioxide tablets, the contact time is four hours. So you've got to be thinking about what you're going to be drinking four hours from now. With these other things, you know, being 30 minutes or an hour is uh, a shorter time to do. But again, what about catching this? Now, uh, you can do chlorine dioxide liquid and that is effective against it 
and it also uh, uh, destroys uh, these cryptosporidium things. So, but then again, like you have the idea, you got to have these two bottles. You got to add them, you know. Wait, and you wait a lot less time. But there is a device they have that makes it actually when you're going to use it. And I guess that is available to our military. But I'm just saying with uh, with the idea that this cryptosporidium is everywhere, or kind of everywhere, they're, they're saying the CDC here says, oh, if you're drinking water in the U.S., surface waters, you better assume that it's in there. So basically, your easiest defense is you're going to boil the water. Or if the water is extremely clear, you could use UV light, uh, like these SteriPens and things like that. They will actually, uh, evidently, the, the cyst can be destroyed with ultraviolet light. Uh, now, uh, I have well water, but the water in this greater Portland area is mostly furnished by uh, the Portland Water District, which gets their water from uh, Sebago Lake. And it's extremely clean water. It's too clean <laughs> because it, it it will eat up concrete mains. In other words, as the water goes through, they don't treat it with something. It actually grabs some of the stuff in the, the concrete and brings it down the line for you to drink. But they put things in it to stop it. Uh, it's a long distance, so the chlorine that they put in it, <clears throat> they have to put some other things in it, so it will still be uh, there at the faucet. In other words, there's a standard of saying you have to sip so much available chlorine when it comes out of the tap, and that's to know that you have a safe amount of chlorinated water. Now, with this water we have, now, it, they have a big UV ultraviolet light sterilization thing that this water goes all through. So that kills everything then, but it doesn't kill something 10 minutes later that's reintroduced somehow, say, or down at the consumer, and that's why they have to have the chlorine. But so I'm just talking about this to make people realize that the uh, a lot of the water pills that were that's in this and a lot of the one hikers buy in the U.S. don't really do the complete job. Now, if I am dehydrated and I have to drink, it's better to, you know, drink water if you can't boil it. It's definitely better to drink it with, treated with this tablet. And if you are completely dehydrated and you're in a life or death type situation, it's going to normally be better for you to drink some of the water, even if you can't treat it somehow. It, but, you know, hopefully we'll, we'd have some things with us, have a container where we can boil things or, you know, or have some more rugged uh, chlorine dioxide pills. But it's just interesting. I did a, a, an amount of reading on this cryptosporidium. And, of course, you know, it talks about here and in Europe. But, you know, this is a Russian MRE. And there's not that much data available for uh, cryptosporidium in water, surface waters in Russia. You know, Russia's huge anyway. So I would just think it, was, it would dramatically vary for the areas. But see, it isn't just transmitted by people. It can actually be transmitted by birds. So you have this bird that has it. You have, let's say you have an open container of water. It swims in it, poops in it, whatever happens, it contacts that. That can have, you know, quite a few different bacteria from the bird, including cryptosporidium. And then all of a sudden you have this problem again where you've got this water and it just isn't safe to drink the way it is. And uh, like I say, if you're in, a, you're in a real survival situation or you're in the military, you've got to be sure that you're not drinking something that's going to put you out. Uh, because you have your mission, you have the thing you got to do. And two, just if you're out, you know, through hiking or something, who wants, to, you know, who wants to get sick and stay in the hospital or be an outpatient because you drank something you shouldn't? Have. But so anyway, I'd encourage you to look if you want more information about it. Look up cryptosporidium. You can check with the CDC or other organizations, and just to become aware of the idea that 
uh, the pills normally do not take care of it. Uh, the chlorine dioxide pills do. They have a four hour contact time. And like I say, there are some chlorine dioxide that is shorter because you, you get it in liquid form. And I, I would bet the liquid form wouldn't last as long. In other words, you know, you put these tablets in a kit, you know, or in your bag and they're good for X number of years. Well, I would think the chlorine dioxide that you buy in a bottle, once you crack it open, the timer's ticking so that that uh, isn't going to be something you use once and you can use it again next year, like you could maybe with the tablets because they're generally in at least a lot, some of them are in a blister pack, so you only open one at a time. Now, some are in bottles where you open the bottle and, you know, but I would think, you know, if you're, if you're out and about through hikers, hikers, campers, whatever, uh, you shouldn't really care about that. Whatever you have, you should use. And uh, it's pretty cheap uh, prevention from getting certain things and you just toss it out afterwards and get new. So uh, there we go. Uh, so, like I say, my only two criticisms of, of this really is that uh, the stove is kind of flimsy and the idea that the, the water, water purification tablets in there, they got three to do three liters, uh, don't handle the cryptosporidium issue. And uh, I could see, you know, being in Europe in certain areas, if you had to use surface water, uh, that could be a problem for you. Bye.